For those of you who don't know, Avatar The Last Airbender was an animated cartoon series that aired on Nickelodeon from 2005 to 2007, written by uh, Michael DiMartino and Brian Konitzko. And um, as many of you would probably uh, feel the same way as me if you're a big fan, I was an, a huge fan of the cartoon series when I was growing up. I think I was like, I don't know, eight, eight years old when it, uh, when it started and I was probably 10 or 11 when it ended. And um, yeah, I'm just a huge fan of it. And when it ended, I was utterly devastated. But yeah, I just want to uh, talk about the new Avatar The Last Airbender live action show that just came out and I actually watched all of it like in two days, eight episodes. And let me just start off by saying that the Avatar The Last Airbender cartoon was amazing show for me. It was an amazing show for me and I could emotionally connect with it. And um, yeah, I just loved it so much uh, growing up as a kid. And as I said before, I was devastated when it ended. And then I was filled with hope when M. Night Shyamalan decided to make a live action movie out of it in 2010, only to be utterly devastated again by the pile of dog shit that that turned out to be. M. Night Shyamalan literally took my beloved favorite show and ate it up and then just shatted out his poopy butthole and it just ended up being a pile of steamy, stinky poo. But today we're not here to talk about the M. Night Shyamalan disaster that was the last Airbender uh, movie in 2010. Today, I just wanted to give you guys like a review uh, slash rant, uh, as you can see by the title. Um, slash my opinions and thoughts of the latest Avatar The Last Airbender live action that came out on Netflix uh, just about three days ago. Also, let me start off by saying that I had a lot of, a lot of you know, I saw a lot of things online, like on social media about how this show was, you know, going in the direction of uh, Game, Game of Thrones. I wanted to appeal to Game of Thrones fans, which I thought was really weird. And um, yeah, I just, I just had really low expectations going into it. I do plan to give a review on this based on the um, similarities and differences that it has with the cartoon show. So I just wanted to put that out there first. And also, uh, fair warning, uh, there are probably going to be spoilers in this video, so just proceed with caution. Okay, so without further ado, let's, before we get into the reason why I titled this video uh, The Avatar the Last Airbender Live Action is Terrible, uh, before we get into those bad reasons, you know, I'm a person who likes to share the good news before the bad. So let's first talk about what I thought was good about the live action series. And there was, there was some, there was a lot of things that I thought were really good about it. For example, I really thought that they did a great job with the clothing, like the clothing and the set design, the environments, uh, the lighting and cinematography was amazing. It looked incredible. And so did the CGI as well. I was actually very skeptical about the CGI uh, based on the budget that they had. Uh, I forget the exact number, but they did a really good job. Although I will say that there were some there were some iffy parts that made me went like, hmm. Um, like I think Katara jumped onto a platform, but instead of her actually jumping, having the actor actually jumping, they had some kind of animation of her jumping. I'm like, why couldn't they just put a, a blue screen and then have her jump or something and jump off into a, a cushion or something? Anyway, getting distracted. So I thought that the CGI was amazing. I thought the cinematography, the lighting, the camera work, that was all incredible. And um, yeah, the set design and the clothing was absolutely spectacular. It was spot on to the show. It was really good. I was very satisfied with that. Also, I did like the fact that they put the ending song uh, that they had in the cartoon after the credits, the song in the credits, they had the same song, which I thought was really cool. It was nostalgic for me. They also had um, like the some similarities with the, with, the, with the score, the music score with the Fire Nation when it turns into a scene with them. And they also had a similar uh, score to the intro of the uh, show as well. And I also thought that the acting was really good. I know some of the actors from other shows, like the the Fire Lord Ozai, is actually played by Daniel Day Kim, I believe, and he was in Hawaii Five O, the remake, and he was also in uh, Lost. He played Jin in the show Lost from a while back that I was a big fan of as well. Uh, but unfortunately, even though they were all good actors, I had no problem with their acting. I thought that the writing was absolutely shit. I don't know what they were doing, but they they just destroyed 
uh, the show with the writing, in my opinion. Um, I mean, they, they took exact lines from the cartoon and put it into the show. It, it felt it felt out of place. Anyway, we'll get to the <laughs> I keep saying we'll get to the bad part later. I just wanted to go over the good parts first. OK, now for the part where we discuss the bad parts and why I titled this video uh, that show being terrible. So one of the biggest reasons that I really thought the show was lackluster and was that it couldn't connect. I couldn't connect emotionally uh, to any of the characters in the show like I did with the cartoon series. Like the character development was almost non-existent. Uh, the writing, and as I, as I said the, before, the writing was absolutely atrocious. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say atrocious. I shouldn't say absolutely atrocious. It was okay, but like mostly the parts that I enjoyed the writing was the lines they took directly from the show. Um, so yeah, that's saying, I, I guess that says something. Yeah, they, they put lines in from the show directly, but they just, they just felt out of place and the rest of the, the rest of the writing was kind of janky in some, uh, some, uh, parts. And because the writing was so bad and there was no character development, which I'll get to later, I just couldn't, I really couldn't connect. Like I had an emotional connection with the, each character from the original show and I just didn't have that at all. Uh, with them. I couldn't sympathize with their emotions. Like, you know, I couldn't empathize with them at all. And it, it was just a, a disaster in that area. Okay, so the next thing that really pissed me off, and this is coming from a, a perspective of comparing the, sh the cartoon to the uh, live action. And let me just start off by saying that I have no issue with taking uh, creative direction and uh, like uh, creativity. I have no problem with uh, having that, but just within reason you know what I'm saying let me give an example that I you know that I just wrote down here but the Omashu arc uh, it was just absolute dog shit so the Omashu arc inside the Omashu arc is also the arc with Jet and the 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 freedom fighters and the you know all those all that arc as well as the the mechanist and his son is handicapped that they're from the the uh in the show in the cartoon the original cartoon they're from the northern air temple is where they meet the group ang ang and the group meet those characters but <laughs> they meet them in omashu so for some reason the writers of the live action decided to put them into the omashu arc and squeeze it all in i don't know why also the june i think june the bounty hunter with the crazy lizard thing that has the tongue and smells uh people <laughs> um that is also a little bit of that in the umashu arc as well so basically it squeezes so much into that one arc oh i forgot that it also squeezes in the uh the lover's cave which i'll get to in a minute but like the the cave of lovers with the musicians it squeezes all that into one arc and it just leaves no room for the actual events that happened in that arc in the cartoon like it just minimizes like the the fight with Boomy and Aang, and I just th thought it was not good at all. <laughs> okay, so let's get into a bit of that character development issues that I mentioned before. Sokka. Okay, so Sokka. I had I had I was very worried because I heard that he was, um, his character was being tuned down, like tuned down of the sexism that he had. And but the the issue is that in the original show he is supposed to be a, a slightly sexist character at the beginning and he develops into uh, a better character at the end and that's that's what his character is all about. Uh, but they just decided to I don't know why they just decided that you know he can't be sexist at all. It has to be perfect. He has to be perfect. <laughs> so so his comedy that it made his comedy and stuff just not funny and it. His comedy felt like out of place. Sokka was kind of, I mean, the actor was great, but the writing was bad. So you can have a, you can have the greatest actor, but if the writing is shit, the acting is going to be shit as well, unfortunately. There's only so much that a good actor can do. And to be fair to the actor, I think he did a really good job trying to get around that bad writing. Also, okay, so Katara. <laughs> so Katara had absolutely no character development at all. Okay, in the original cartoon, Aang and Katara were training a lot with waterbending and Aang was learning waterbending from Katara and Katara was learning waterbending as well as she developed her skills as a waterbender. But in this live action, there was no waterbending no water bending training at all. And when she got to the North Pole, they're like, there's a scene in the show which they brought from the cartoon is like Zuko meets her at the North Pole. I know I'm jumping around a bit. But her, uh, she meets he meets her in the North Pole and he says like she gets she's pretty good at water bending all of a sudden all of a sudden she's amazing at water bending where did that come from there was no training arc and he says like from the show it's like the exact same thing he says um, it looks like you found a master I'm like and as soon as he said that I'm like dude 
what master there is no there was no master there was no training yeah and then she just responds by saying i'm my own master I'm like what the what the hell is going on like that <laughs> that just blew my mind like how horrible that like the storytelling was there there was no uh background like there was no training at all for katara okay the next thing i want to talk about is uh, uh, is some more character stuff but appa and momo were non-present in the show like they had zero screen almost zero screen time i did not see them hardly ever and that was crazy because appa is a huge part of the the show and like huge part of ang's it's like his support animal basically so i was very uh flabbergasted <laughs> by the fact that they didn't show appa or momo hardly ever they had like no screen time it was ridiculous. Also, let's get to the main character, Aang, okay? <laughs> so Aang, uh, as well as Katara, uh, for some reason, okay, he's the Avatar, supposed to master all four elements, and in the first season, it basically covers all of book one, water. <laughs> and he's supposed to learn water bending in this season, which he does in the show, and a bit of fire bending as well, and we'll get to that. But he doesn't know any other element except for air in the live action for some reason. I don't know why they didn't show any water bending for him. Aang didn't have any train, didn't have any training arcs whatsoever. He didn't learn water bending, and he was he was just as a character he was way too serious. And I'm sure other uh, YouTubers have said this as well in their reviews. But Aang is supposed to be like this 12 year old boy who just wants to have fun, and he kind of wants to ignore the problems of the world at the beginning of the show. Um, and he just kind of does these things like ride these ride the penguins in the snow at the beginning He rides the koi fish I believe and at Kyoshi Island arc um, But he does none of that in the show like it's all business with Aang in the live action like there is no uh, There is no fun in games. It's just all serious and dark and despair and I gotta be the avatar I gotta become the avatar which is kind of ironic because he doesn't learn any other element except for air in the season one and the actor was great I thought again. I thought the actor was great, but his writing sucked like the writer sucked the screenplay was bad um, There's only so much that a good actor can do with a with a bad screenplay. Here's another thing that really uh, Really knocked me off my knockers if, if you will <laughs> The traitor arc. Okay, so they they there's an arc where they meet a traitor of the Fire Nation. He lives in some kind of swamp thing, and he's a firebender. And he actually ends up teaching Aang how to firebend a little bit, in addition to the water bending that Katara is teaching him, which didn't happen in the sh in the show for some reason. <laughs> anyway, so the traitor arc didn't exist where Aang learned firebending, and he burned Katara like he burned her by accident which is a huge major part in the series the the relationship between Aang and, Ka and Katara is basically non-existent and he hurts her in the show by accident and he vows to never use firebending again this is like a huge character development uh like a development of a character in in the show and they just totally ignored it they just they just threw it out the window they didn't even show that at all i just couldn't believe it i couldn't believe it it's just the 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 relationship between katara and ang is basically non-existent in the show just right from the beginning like like i think ang uh like fell in, like love at first sight like he he loves katara like he likes her a lot already right in the beginning from the get-go and in the show that relationship that that uh that relationship does not exist in the show at all there is no there is no love connection between ang and katara in the live action which there was a huge it was a huge part of the original cartoon also that brings me to my point about the cave of lost lovers or whatever that they squeeze into the omashu arc as i said before the cave uh which only like the love will light the way or whatever and the whole part of that the whole part of that was in the original cartoon ang loves katara and they kiss in the in the ton in the cave which lights lights the um lights the cave up so they can get out and i i don't even think that happened in season one i think that happened in season two i don't know why they brought that over but yeah so it just kind of defeated the whole purpose because Sokka and katara were in the cave which doesn't make any sense i do not what they i do not know what they were trying to do with that but it was uh it was disgusting to say the least <laughs> let's getting back to uh, some character development issues commander Zhao. Okay, commander Zhao also had no con no development either There was no Agni Kai with Zuko there there. It was just like weird It was just like uh, he was there and in the way like he didn't really play a big part uh, Although he did but I don't understand why he did that's why I think it might be confusing for people who haven't seen the original cartoon Who are just watching this uh, without any knowledge. They might be confused. I have no idea and Azula uh, was 
was just the casting was bad i don't uh you know nothing against the the actress but i don't think she looks the part for azula because azula is supposed to be uh like evil and crazy and the the girl uh, the girl that played azula would just seem some kind of like like she wasn't like it, she didn't give off like the crazy and evil vi i don't know if that was an acting like the acting skill issue but there was something wrong there was something wrong with that scene and in the sh in the live action she's kind of more of a bratty kid rather than um a crazy psychopath which she is in the cartoon one of my one of my least favorite characters that they brought over was uncle iroh zuko's uncle so he his lines felt like out of place like and like he spoke too fast like uncle iroh in the original cartoon just he speaks very slowly and he gives wit he gives sage advice and let's drink some tea you know that's his character but he's just like he's speaking fast like i'm speaking right now his lines outside of the ones they took directly from the show were just cringy they fell out of place like he'll say he'll say something like a man needs his rest that's it i'm like okay that that what well, what okay so zuko Zuko I actually kind of liked because he was the only one that that had any character development. They showed uh, his backstory, him getting banished, um, him getting burned in the Agni Kai duel with his father. Um, that's why he has the scar. And then, you know, they showed more screen time of Zuko, uh, actually like more than like any other main character in the show, pretty much. I, I mean, that's what I got from that. And um, I was able to connect with with him almost uh, like with him emotionally, but he felt the problem with Zuko is he felt not damaged enough in in the live action. Like in the cartoon, um, he was way more damaged and more adult like. Like he was way more like serious. But in the show, it's kind of he was kind of like a bratty kid almost. Okay, so my next point of why I think the show was terrible was the pacing. Okay, so the pacing was really bad. Even I had trouble following it sometimes. Even though I I've seen the cartoon and I know the story, even I had trouble following what they were trying to do. It was just all over the place. Like. I don't know what the heck was going on. I was having trouble following it. I can't imagine like, well, first of all, the whole thing in general was felt really rushed. I don't know what the problem was because they had eight hours, eight episodes to put like 20 of 20 minute episodes uh, from season one into the story. So they should have had plenty of enough time. Yeah, if there was an hour long each, they could do three episodes of the cartoon in, in one episode of the live action. After the first episode, like it just went off on a tangent for some reason. There goes that, you know, the create creative direction, which is okay, but it has to be like within reason, like the One Piece action, the One Piece live action was excellent. That was amazing. That was perfect. That is an example of what the Avatar The Last Airbender live action should have done. It just felt, it felt really rushed and, and, it, and I, I felt like, they didn't take enough time to develop the characters and to establish an emotional connection between us, the viewer, and those characters. Another thing that kind of ticked me off was the spirit world. The face stealer spirit, the spirit co, the, the face steer, stealer was absolutely terrifying as a kid watching that in the cartoon. And I really thought that was great. That was, that instilled fear in me. <laughs> but in this, I mean, the CGI was great in the live action. Don't get me wrong. But he just didn't felt scary and the whole premise be behind ko was if you showed emotion any emotion at all happy sad anything he would steal your face so what ang had to do was go in there and just show no emotion but he ang just goes in there and he's like Wah! he's like scared and he's like angry and like Whoa. It, def it defeats the purpose of this the face stealer ko like he <laughs> he's supposed to steal your face if you show emotion and ang showed like freaking 10 emotions in that scene <laughs> By the way, the live action decided to like reveal the Fire Lord's face right away. They revealed Sozin's comet. It was in the sky. They revealed that that's what makes a firebender strong. And they they showed like the, them attacking the air temple at the beginning, which I just thought was so weird because that just took away. And they also showed Fire Lord Ozai's face right away. But the, it's like that took away from the mysterious, the, the mysteriousness of the Fire Nation. But in this show, though, it's like they just show it. They just like spoil it for you right in the beginning, right in the first five minutes. And I don't know what the plan with that was, but it just kind of ruined it for me. Like it, it's supposed to, it's supposed to build up like mystery. The mysteriousness is supposed to build up into like finally revealing what the actual, the, the, how dire the situation is. But Aang's like already aware of everything at the beginning. Also, as I said before, the, 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 they were trying to, you know, appeal to fans of Game of Thrones for some reason. I don't know why, because this was a show that aired on Nickelodeon for kids. 
there's a beginning like in the first five minutes the fire nation like the uh, sozin or whatever he just incinerates he just incinerates this prisoner he, he finds he like just freaking chars him like a turkey in the in the roaster like it's just right on the screen it just burns his flesh off right in front of you it's like what this is so dark which uh, it's okay but like that okay i guess that's why you were trying to appeal to game of thrones fans i guess you were trying to do that i have no idea but I think that was one of the big reasons why there was a, a big, like, I don't know if it was a falling out, but the creators, Brian Konitsko and Michael Diamartino, uh, went away. They left They left the, sh the production of this live action, which made me really worried and skeptical, and my, and my expectations were set very low because they, you know, there were some creative differences there, and that's why they left. So that was really making me uh, anxious about watching this. Anyway, sorry I went on a huge rant there, but I just had to get that out because I'm a huge fan of the cartoon series. It, I had an emotional connection with it. I loved it. it. It was devastating to see it end, and it was devastating to get my feelings destroyed by M. Night Shyamalan pooping out that steamy pile of dog shit that was the Avatar the Last Airbender live action 2010 movie, and then to get my hopes up again, just, just to destroy me again. Not destroy me. Don't get me wrong. Okay, this was... 1,000 times better than the M. Night Shyamalan disaster, okay? This was 1,000 times better. Don't get me wrong, okay? <laughs> but it just was very devastating to see that it, it just didn't, it didn't live up to the, my low, already low expectations. So for those, though, that reason and the reasons that I mentioned before, I'm going to give this show a 5 out of 10. Uh, because, first of all, I'd give that M. Night Shyamalan movie a 1 out of 10. That was atrocious. But yeah, so I'd give this show a 5 out of 10 because it was good. Don't get me wrong. It was okay. Um, the, the CGI was great. Like I said, um, the acting was good. The writing was just shit. That's, you can't help a good, you know, a good actor can't help bad writing. The cinematography was great. The set design was so good. You could tell, like the clothing, you could tell that there was love put into this show. It just was so sad to see that it didn't, it didn't like, and I'm sure maybe they feel like sad too like the people that put so much love into this live action that just turned out kind of subpar i guess i don't know what the right word for that would be it just didn't love live up to you know expectations i wish they would have just kind of you know paced it well like it did in the show they could have totally done it because they had eight hours eight episodes one hour a piece there was 20 episodes 20 minutes a piece they could have done it in six episodes they could <laughs> they could have adapted the show in like six episodes if they paced it correctly and still would have gotten the character development that the cartoon had. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a five out of ten. Yeah, I'm just I'm just disappointed. I don't know what else to say. Anyway, that's it. I'll see you. I'll see you guys later. Bye.